In sports, if you want to be the best, there are no off days. So in November of 1621, Pilgrims established a three-day feast with the fledgling colonies back then, Chris. Uh, they brought with them a cornucopia of goodies Yes. Uh, to include uh, a football and pie. <laughs> and then uh, here we go. All these years later, the tradition has been established. That's all it had, yes. isn't it? Was a I football believe it, and pie? I, I believe. Now, I didn't pay attention very much uh, during U.S. history classes, but, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how Thanksgiving started. And a very happy Thanksgiving week to you yes. and to you. And uh, here we are on the No Off Days podcast, Chris Cato, Scott Smith. So, um, yeah, I see we have a little feast here in front of us, too. I'm thankful for many things this Thanksgiving season. First and foremost, all of God's blessings. Secondly, uh, my tumultuous friendship with you that somehow... <laughs> tumultuous? It's, it's, it's had if its, I knew what that meant. It's had its ups and downs, but the ups are now that you've... Uh, let me be a part of this wonderful <laughs> No Off Days podcast that uh, has consumed a lot of my time. I was up all morning. You could tell I had no time to put on makeup. I was oh up boy. all morning baking pies so yeah. that I could impress you. Well, I think you have taken our friendship to new heights because you know the way to my heart, my friend. How about the, so what are we what are we doing here? What do we got? Well, as you as you said on many episodes ago, I think it was our pre Halloween <laughs> episode. We're transitioning into pie season yeah. now, which is the yeah. best time of yeah. year. Yeah. yeah. And so I wanted to just offer a little thankful peace offering, and we have a little uh, cornucopia of pie mm. here. We have the we have the the sweet potato, we have the pumpkin, always mandatory, and we have the ever controversial uh, pecan. It's it's controversial uh, for some. Yeah, so, okay. it's, it's the candy corn of pies, and so. Yikes. This I don't is, know that I'd go that far, but okay. All this right. is an exercise in, um, first of all, an excuse to eat pie, but secondly... Grossing out our viewers? No, perhaps <laughs> that always happens, doesn't it? <laughs> but, you know, I am anti-pecan pie, okay. so this is selfish of me. I want to see if 10-year-old Chris is still correct and this is gross, or if my taste buds have matured in a way... So have you not had, had it since you were 10? I, I'm, I may have tried it a couple of times okay. and, and couldn't get past the pecans on the gotcha. top layer. Okay, so it, it was ingrained at a yes. young age, and now you're, you're trying to fight to see if that's a, a true conviction. I want I believe okay. in second, third, fourth chances. I want to give pecan well, let's, a fourth chance. Can we dive in? Please, let's do. All right. Well, you know what? I, I'm sorry, but we don't. I just I always have something here ready. Um, <laughs> what, what do you have? <laughs> Oh, you! I always have. Oh, you have cream. The, the ready whip, and, and it just works out for this episode. But it's always here. Okay. Right, so, well, you're soft if you need whipped cream for your well, pies. Well, I'm gonna get softer. Here we go. Although I, I may need some for this pecan. But I, I only want to do it on the, uh, on the, on the pumpkin pie. So I, I'm more of a cool whip guy, anyway. All right. So what are you going with? Well, I'm going gonna, for, I'm you? gonna do pecan first because oh. I don't want any of these delicious pies that I like to influence my opinion. Okay. Mmm. Again, mm. for our audio only audience. Audio audience. They're, audio. Getting, <laughs> they're getting all the, the goodies. Um, okay. I love it. I mean, the, it's great. Good consistency. You know, the, the pumpkins are nice, or the uh, pecans are nice and crisp across the top. Yeah. You have the, uh, the gooey layer underneath. What is in that goo? That troubles me. That's pecan goo. I don't, I don't know if it is. I, I taste some riboflavin in there. Do you? Maybe some corn syrup. <laughs> okay, well, definitely corn syrup. Um, yeah, I, I, ten-year-old Chris is still right. That that top layer of pecans is just so bitter. Here, it's here's so, the thing. It's now, so I, pungent. I disagree. I think that there are um, you uh, you know adding to the pie with a, a dollop of whipped cream or in pecan pie case, I think you need vanilla ice cream. Oh well, and, any pie you have to put ice I cream on think, is is not a real pie. I, it. it I can't I, stand I, alone. I, I disagree. I disagree. I think it does stand alone, but I'm, pecan very solid. Don't eat the others yet. Okay. Are you, you going to eat the whole slice? No. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to the next one. Okay. What do we got? All right. Let's go sweet potato next. Sweet potato. Okay. Oh, wait, I need and, a palette. This, this is the brighter orange hue, because sometimes oh. people have trouble differentiating I wanted between. to see if you could tell the difference. Yeah. Well, could you? now I know. For the audio audience, what are you processing now? Okay, so, yeah, I mean, that's definitely sweet potato, which I, I'm okay with. I'm okay yeah. I'm okay with all pies, okay? Let me just come right out and say it. All you pies, have no pie that you uh, won't pie eat. Pie is, is, is top in the hierarchy of all delectable desserts, okay? okay. Uh, it's <laughs> More so than cake? Yes, it, it's better than cake. Cookies? Yes, better than cookies. Wow. So I'm a pie guy through and through. All right. Uh, but the sweet potato pie, it just doesn't do it for me. And I, I don't know if it's mm. like the lacking of nutmeg. 
The no- mm. the knowledge of knowing that it's a potato. Oh, I love that sweet potato. It's all right. It's really good. You can't go wrong with sweet potato in all of its forms on Thanksgiving. Like that's the first thing that's going on my plate. Well, the casserole is the sweet potato casserole with a, with a crunchy yes. strudely top, which sometimes has a little pecan in it, but yeah. just a little. Yeah, I'm just okay a little. That. All right, I'm moving on to pumpkin pie. Okay, I'm going to keep eating the sweet potato. I mean, the pumpkin pie is just—it's glorious. It's from the hand of God. It's just—it's actually from Publix. Five dollars. <laughs> Not well, from the hand, hand of, God. of God, Publix. It's very good. All right. I mean, pumpkin pie. You just it, it always. There's always room for a slice, and that would be my my tagline, my slogan for marketing. It's a good pie. slogan. I love it. Yeah, it's, it's so light. It's All like right. you're not even eating it. So it sounds like in reverse order. That's your one, two, three. Mm-mm. Sweet potato, number one. Oh wow. Sorry, okay. pumpkin. Yeah. Sweet no. potato's sweeter. Well, just because it's sweeter doesn't make it better. Well, you know what? If I had eaten the pumpkin first, I probably thought the pumpkin was the best. But no, sweet potato, a little sweeter. All right. I like it. All right. Let's Wait, bring that's in, why yours. That's why you like pumpkin. Let's bring better. in Brian King. Hey, why don't you just squirt some of that in your mouth okay. while Brian comes into the show? <laughs> BK, do you have uh, – sorry, you didn't get it. Did you get pie? Wait, he does have pie. I gave Here we've pie. been eating this whole time without him. That's all right. Brian, have you have you had a chance to dive in a I'm little not, bit? I, it's weird. Cato, you and I are just Don't alike. say it. No, yep. I had pumpkin pie once as a kid and absolutely hated Wait, it. Wait, pecan uh, or pu- I mean, pumpkin? I mean, pumpkin pie. Uh, yeah. Pecan pie. Yeah. Pecan pie. Oh, okay. And have never eaten it since. Then I don't a- know what it I think it was that goo, that gooey oh, stuff. No, it's the pecans on top. Try it again. Let's uh, let, let's let, I like, just rule. The best part of the goo is the goo that is like ultra sticky. If we like could, the part that's been cooked, you know? If we could just eat the goo without the pecans yeah, on top, kinda, it'd if, be okay. When you get the little chewy consistency, man, that, it's not, that's the... No, let's no. see if... No, Brian doesn't like it. 35-year-old Brian agrees with 10-year-old Brian. I agree with... I like the 35-year-old no. assessment. I think it's time to grow up, boys. Yeah? This it's is, just I like pecans. And you guys, separate, I mean, you, I you are from the heart of the South. Pecan yes. pie. There's no more Southern pie than pecan pie, I right? Just, I've never I've never liked it. I don't know uh, what it is. I did grow up with, with pecan trees in the yard. We would have to pick them up off the ground Me to, uh, to process them well, into these gross pies. Well, maybe that's part of the pies. problem. No, I grew up around sweet potatoes, too, and I love those. All right. <laughs> have you ever eaten a raw sweet potato? Negative. I have. Yeah, well, out of the ground. Not bad. <laughs> You're I get one of these questionable stories from your youth. Yeah, we need to get your parents on the horn here. Survivor man, there. Right, yeah. yeah, I just wanted to see if it tasted okay raw, and it does. Yeah. Wow. There's a lot to be said for raw vegetables. I'm a big fan of sweet potatoes, but I don't think in a pie is their best form. And that's you know that's all. I'll just leave it there. Pumpkin pumpkin pie wins hands down all the time. And I, and I look berry pies. I'm I'm a big fan of like a, a four berry pie. Uh, apple pie I, I'm okay with. Think it's uh, highly overrated. Um, oh, I know we've discuss- apple pie is highly overrated. I, it, Are you highly, American? It's highly overrated. How about Dutch apple pie? It's got the and you ask if I'm American. It's got come the, on. It's got the strudel on top. Well, strudel is nice. I um, know why you like this pumpkin pie so much. You put that whipped cream on it. That's that made it, it better. Yeah. Wow, it's good. It's, put, it makes it a happy is. marriage. But right? I think you should have a pure pie experience next time. No, okay. Well. Either way, I think we are tasting a, a couple slices of Americana right hmm. here, as the uh, it is the American holiday, so Thanksgiving. Good. And uh, thank you, Pilgrims. We are very thankful that the Pilgrims brought pies over and um, football, and you know they did bring the, that picture. The tradition of the they? Detroit Lions losing uh, every Thanksgiving, <laughs> they brought that over too. The we, Cowboys yeah, eating a turkey them. leg. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate. So, uh, Brian, um, what do we have on today's program? Aside got, from pie. Well, we got the pie already out of the way. We got, uh, <laughs> we're going to check in with Warwick Dunn, Bay Area great, Buccaneer great, Falcon great. He's uh, back in town doing what he always does during the holidays, and that's giving away houses to single mothers out there. We'll check in with him, see what he's up to, and uh, let's see what his thoughts are on the Buccaneers and just football in general. Yeah, what a great guy. Super guy. Warwick Dunn's one of the best. Yeah. On the field and, yeah. of course, off the field. Yeah. And uh, at the end of the show. In the show. Big tease. Uh, got a little update for a story we've done. We're only 11 episodes into this podcast, but I have a story update for oh, something we've hit we? on early on the year. Yeah. Well, you know, this is uh, 11. Yeah. We, we've gone to 11. Yes, we have. Yes. Is it a follow-up to uh, Ugly Dixus, who we met last That's week? No, it's not a follow-up to him. And it's not a follow-up to the bear guy with cell phone. Oh, I was hoping <laughs> for that one. <laughs> so... <laughs> but we'll check in at the end of the show with that. Okay, very good. All right. Good. Thanks for the pie. Yeah, absolutely. Enjoy. Don't eat the pecan. Eat Just away. Eat the others. <laughs> yeah. All right. Crumbs on your face by the end of the show. All right. <laughs> well, 
If you are listening and you would like to watch the Nod Pod, go to fox13news.com slash Nod Pod. If you're watching, you want to listen, subscribe. Point the camera of your smartphone at the QR code on the screen. Bottom right-hand corner, it'll take you to the colony of Nod. You can click listen, and uh, all the shows are there. So uh, put your bib on, loosen your trousers, and feast. <laughs> giblets and all. What are giblets? But I don't know. I'm not sure, and I don't want to know. Uh, please show us your thankfulness by subscribing, and, and we appreciate all ye pilgrims who have uh, steadied the tempests and uh, have made it here to the new land. Surviving Nod. scurvy Ab- and many absolutely. other things. It was, uh, it was dicey for yeah. a while there, <laughs> yeah. but only the strong survive. All right, so uh, as mentioned, college football in its final week of the regular season. So last week we talked about rivalry trophies, but this week is really college football rivalry week. And uh, that number one game on the slate that features a 2-3 matchup is Michigan and Ohio State being played in Columbus, Ohio. That game will be seen on Fox this weekend. Uh, and this is a, this is a potential playoff spot. I don't know that the loser can make it in. They've certainly uh, made the waters a little bit more muddied should they lose this game. Uh, But there's a whole bunch of other games to keep an eye on as well, Chris, that also could have play in implications. Well, before we go down that road, let's stick with the game. I feel like the whole season has pointed toward this weekend in Columbus, Ohio. And it is, I think, a birth to the playoff because – I believe that there's a possibility. Well, first of all, the winner of this game is going to most likely play Iowa for the Big Ten Championship. Right. Yeah. So, you know, probably walking on into the playoff at that point. And now with Tennessee losing last week in just horrible fashion, uh, they were positioned to move into that four slot with the loser of this Ohio State-Michigan game dropping out. But now with Tennessee out of the mix, the loser of this Ohio State-Michigan game has a really good shot at making that Final Four and get you getting two Big Ten teams into the playoff. They'd need a little help. Yeah, I, I don't know that we anticipated that. I mean, I, I thought that there'd be a little bit more of an SEC presence in the Final Four come last week of the season. Uh, but uh, with the Tennessee loss last week to South Carolina, of course, that, that has changed the math a little bit and has given the loser in this Ohio State-Michigan game, um, I, I would say, of the teams not going to a championship game, probably the the best opportunity to get into that final four but if you look ahead to the here's how i have it slated i got sec uh i I think georgia cruises on in i think they'll take on lsu and you got big 10 ohio state against iowa uh in the big 10 championship big 12 i got tcu taking on k-state a rematch uh that was a good game earlier in the year tcu uh, came out on top in that one pac-12 Remember, they've gone away with division, so it's the top two teams in the Pac-12, which will be USC and Oregon. And Wait a minute. You're putting Oregon in there, or you're saying yeah. oh, they haven't locked it up yet, though? I don't believe they've locked it up, no. But, but I, yeah. I, yeah, I'd have to look at the standings, but I believe they, they have Oregon State this week. I, I think a win there. and um, Chalky, just putting the, aside the Beavers, just saying, Oregon State, you've got no shot at this. This guy's an Oregon homer, by the way. Yeah, I, I think we need to be go, clear go with that. Go build a dam. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, Ducks are in, and then I got uh, – uh, in the ACC, Clemson taking on North Carolina. I think that's pretty much a, a lock already. Yeah. So, uh, given that, what upsets could we potentially see this week rivalry and then next week championship week to to change up this top four away from what it currently is? Which you know we, we got right. Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, and TCU rounding out the top four right now. Do all those four teams make it in, Chris? Let's start with this with the. Pac-12. I think that is the team, USC, that has the biggest chance of slipping up this weekend on Rivalry Weekend. They have Notre Dame, who's playing some really good ball right now, who can control the clock, keep that powerful USC offense on the sideline, and USC's defense has issues. And Caleb Williams has been so great. He's been able to overcome all of that and put this team on his back and, and have a lot of second half comebacks for victories like we saw last week against UCLA uh, that's going to catch up to them at some point either against Notre Dame or in that Pac-12 championship so I think USC is going to take a loss either in this rivalry weekend or in the Pac-12 championship okay so that puts them at two losses and possibly puts them out of the mix probably yeah Yeah. Uh, and I would agree with you there I think they slip up one of these next two games um, all right, so then how do you finish out that top four? Let me, you want me to give you what I have? I got I, I have Georgia coming in at number one undefeated. I got uh, Ohio State undefeated at number two. 
And I think Michigan, though they lose this week, I think they sneak back in. After the Big Ten Championship game, I think they will be the best team uh, to slate in there at number three. And then at four, I think it's going to be a toss-up because I think TCU might lose. Yeah. I, I think that they, they might lose, maybe not this week, but I, I could see them losing to Kansas State in the championship game. So now you have a one-loss TCU team or – you have Clemson, who I think mm-hmm. is going to cruise to an ACC championship, and I think they're at nine right now. So that would be quite the jump in the rankings, but we know that they do away with that, that that's not really precedent for the decision at the end of right. the season for the committee. So uh, I think y- between TCU and Clemson, that's what I think that four spot will come down to. So you're looking at a one-loss Clemson ACC champion compared to a one-loss TCU that didn't win its conference championship. Right. And in that scenario, Clemson's getting in. Well, I mean, if you look at the strength of schedule, I don't know. I, I mean, I mean, that that would be. I, I agree. Like I, th- I think that maybe you lean toward Clemson there, but given the strength of schedule, maybe TCU has a bit of an edge. Wait, so you're go you you got Georgia, Ohio State, Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan. Yeah, even though they lose, I, I think I, that they'll slide down this week and they'll pop back up in the final week. I don't know. You you look want to talk about strength of schedule? They've got the worst non-conference. They opened with Hawaii, uh, Colorado State, and UConn. And they've got nothing else. If they lose to Ohio State, they've got nothing else other than their win over Penn State. Who would State. you put in? I mean, if, if we're both on a, in agreement that USC is probably going to trip up with Notre Dame and, and likely Oregon in these last two games. Yeah, one I, of those I, think games. That's, I think it's how Clemson gets in. I do. I, as much as I don't really want to see that because I don't know if they are one of the four best teams, I think if they've got the uh, mark of one loss in a – conference championship which michigan won't have and their strength of record actually if you look at strength of record clemson's is, is a little tougher than okay michigan. so, so you're you're in your scenario you're saying t- tcu runs the table gets in and they'll probably be no here's what here's point. what i think is going to happen okay. i thought you were asking me That's about those two I, I believe that georgia ohio state uh and then i do think tcu is going to lose in the big 12 championship game against kansas state that's a tough team and i think it you'll have Clemson getting in, and you'll have Michigan getting that fourth spot. Okay, so TCU's out. Yeah. Okay, so that's basically what I'm saying too. I think we have. I mean, so but I'm saying that the the committee's big decision is whether to put in a ACC champ in Clemson with a soft schedule versus a TCU team that is fresh off a Big Twelve loss. Yeah. I think with the conference championship, ACC champions got to go in with one loss, no matter how down the conference might have been. Okay. I all think right. that's what we're going to see. Horn Frog fans, send all your emails to chris.cato. Um, all right, so elsewhere in college football, uh, of course, we've talked about the, the, the coaching vacancies that have been opened here for several weeks, and there are quite a few. Uh, we have uh, job openings at Colorado and at Nebraska and Wisconsin and Auburn. And one guy's name that has been now circulated uh, due to a recent report was Lane Kiffin. And uh, I'll just read the tweets because Lane Kiffin is he is the uh, quintessential troller. On, he's on, great. Yeah, yeah, he's great at it. And he, no matter what your be- belief is about Lane Kiffin, if he does one thing well, it, it might not be coaching football. It might actually be. <laughs> he's pretty good at that. But I'm pretty sure that uh, he has mastered the social media game. So uh, a reporter, a sports reporter from uh, a station in Starkville, Mississippi, John Sokoloff. Uh, tweets out breaking Ole Miss head coach Lane Kiffin plans to step down as the Rebels coach Friday and head to Auburn to become the Tigers next head coach according to sources sources say the Tigers haven't officially offered the job to anyone yet so Lane to Auburn is happening story soon it was a weirdly constructed text that is odd so there, there has not been any offer made but it is happening is what he's saying in this tweet so John Sokoloff clearly has some well-placed sources well he's in starkville so i mean this is uh presumably these are mississippi state sources you know to what extent they might steer him wrong as a rival of ole miss i uh, that's kind of where we're leaning right now but but what caps it off was lane's response so his initial response was he retweeted it and he said well this is news to me and then <laughs> he put in some work and then he put in some work here we go lane tweets out this just in breaking news john sokoloff of wcbi news in starkville mississippi plans to step down his lead anchor 
and head to WLOX, which I'm assuming is a rival in town, uh, to becoming their new lead anchor. Sources say WLOX hasn't offered the job to anyone yet, so John to WLOX is happening story soon. <laughs> <laughs> to you underscore gotta, the point of the ridiculousness, right? You gotta love it. Yeah. You, you, the great thing about this is that this isn't just a tweet that he you know, typed out like most of us do. He went to the trouble of finding the little icon that's the <laughs> yellow triangle with the exclamation point, and, you know, put opening a Word document, finding that art, clipping it into it, typing this out, printing it out, taking a photo of it with his phone, presumably, and then putting on Twitter. Like, these are, he could have spent this time recruiting or something. Yeah. I don't know. But well, he, chef's kiss. It was done very well. And, um, now the question is, does Lane actually end up at Auburn? Because, well, wait, you know, the first thing that happens after someone denies a report to a new job is they end up taking that new job. Yeah. No, he's uh, – I, gosh, I think it's about 50-50 right now. I don't think he's going. Okay. I have no – I don't have the sources John Sokolov has. <laughs> I, this is just Clearly. This is just gut, which is full of pie right now. But I keep thinking, why would he go to Auburn when he has – it would be a lateral move well, in a money. lot of ways. He's Mo in the SEC West. Money. Yes, but Ole Miss has reportedly offered him an extension that would make him one of the top ten highest paid coaches in the country. Yeah. And at Auburn, you've got to not only, yes, you'll get a nice salary, but you've got to deal with those boosters that have just, every coach that's come along, they have to have such control of it, they've wrecked it. And he doesn't have to deal with that right now at Ole Miss. And uh, honestly, if he waits a couple of years, he can probably have the Texas A&M job. Yeah, that's uh, – I don't know how many more years that will be. I mean, maybe maybe two months. You think so? <laughs> wow. Well, that would be a hefty payout for those uh, A&M boosters. Um, what do you think? Do you think he goes? Look, I think, first of all, tip of the cap to Sokoloff for, for helping to give Lane Kiffin some leverage in his negotiation <laughs> for a new contract. Uh but I think at this point, if you're going to go through that extent to, to troll this guy and to bring what was probably, a, you know, not a, not a hugely trafficked tweet to, to the national uh, I think platform, Sokolov has a thousand followers. I mean, Sokolov would have to, um, I mean, he would, if he ends up being proven right in this, like, I mean, he would, he would have that ownership stake over Lane Kiffin for the rest of his he, career. He would, yeah. So I, because Lane went so hard against it, and again, my, my gut's filled with pie as well, but my gut says uh, he's probably staying put. Did yeah. you see the tweet by the guy who is the lead anchor at WLOX, which is in Biloxi, Mississippi, by the way? Uh-oh. He said, this is news to me. I've now be I've been informed by Lane Kiffin that I'm being replaced. It was nice working with you Look also. at what you started, so, Lane. So it was, it's fun, you know. <laughs> yeah, it just keeps going and going. Well, in the NFL, a uh, story coming out this week where – NFL owners have been accused of colluding with the league to prevent fully guaranteed contracts, uh, which is interesting because we have not seen this much in the NFL. Uh, there are a couple outliers. Kirk Cousins, Deshaun Watson is the, is the biggest name. He, he received during his suspension a five-year or prior to a uh, five-year $90 million guaranteed contract, which was unprecedented by the Cleveland Browns. And, you know, coming out of, you know, what was an impending suspension, that's really what underscored the, what was shocking about this deal. But now the NFLPA is saying that because no deals have happened since then, they're using that. And, and maybe they have other information, but it wasn't explicitly shared uh, that they believe that the NFL is is basically telling all owners, hey, you know what, let's um, let, let's not guarantee no more fully contracts. guaranteed, no more fully guaranteed deals. Let's like let's this. not have any more of that. And uh, and so the, the the PA is now uh, looking into it and, and perhaps that there's you know going to be some damages that they're seeking. Uh, but what I thought was interesting, uh, here's the NFL attorney. Uh, he says, quote, the pleading falls to uh, fails to explain the basis of their alleged expectation. Uh, the Players Association wants damages awarded. Uh, some of the quarterbacks uh, that have current contracts that could have potentially gotten guaranteed contracts, they think that maybe these are subject to being terminated and redrawn. So some of those names, which ironically are Kyler Murray, uh, Russell Wilson, Derek Carr, Matt Stafford, and Aaron Rodgers. All of these quarterbacks are having awful seasons. That's like the anti-all-pro list you just gave. Right. So season. you're like, I mean, I don't know. If you're going to make a case for like, you know what? We deserve guaranteed contracts. The fact that after signing contracts, they go on and have, have awful seasons. 
Doesn't I don't know that that really underscores your point. Doesn't help, does yeah, it? Yeah, it could be an ho- ad hominem, but uh, right now the Arizona Cardinals 4-7. and seven, And, in fact, all of these teams are no better than 4-7 and seven right now. Being led by guys that, you know, they're big names, big quarterback names, but they're just not getting the job done. Has anyone said, I, I'm sure they have, I'm sure this is a, a an argument that the NFL will make, is does it take collusion to just – block a bad deal or to not go through with a bad all they have to say is this is the Cleveland Browns <laughs> they're a mess they offered this outlier five-year 230 million fully guaranteed contract it doesn't take collusion to say we're not going to offer you that kind of deal I don't think right you don't have to get behind closed doors or you know on some chat group and say okay we need to you know huddle the you know be un- unified in this and not offer fully guaranteed contracts. I think that's just good business. I think the Browns just, you know, were the Browns and made a bad deal. Yeah. Well, you know, I think that what it, it reeks of is the Players Association giving the illusion of fighting for players when where they ought to be fighting for players is when there are actual CBA negotiations going on. Because, you know, in the NBA, Major League Baseball, they have long guaranteed contracts in full. And the and NFL has fallen behind in that regard. So how, how do you win that PR battle? Well, y- you come out and say that there's collusion against you. Not that you can't, you're not Without, negotiating yeah. with, the, with these owners at the time and place when those things are appropriate. Uh, but I don't know. Hopefully, you know, we get a little bit more clarity in the coming weeks. And, and, and maybe there is some teeth to this allegation by the Players Association. But as it stands, it, it seems pretty toothless. And I don't see how they, they win this. Let me ask you, you pointed out some of the contracts, the quarterback's contracts that would be affected by this. Could that be a win in a way for some of their teams to say, oh, we get to tear up these contracts and redo them now? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Derek Carr, give me your money back, Russell Wilson. I want fewer guaranteed yeah. years, actually. You know, what What I think it could do, though, is it, it's, you know, you, you kind of, uh, you're turning over the, the leaf pile a little bit. You're, you're, you're bringing up this topic as you have potential big names here set to sign new, new deals and chief among them is Lamar Jackson. So he, yeah, you know, he, he could did, benefit. He didn't sign his deal, but could this conversation buoy his chances of getting something like that? Because I, we know that he's aiming for something mm-hmm. bigger and grander and he wants to be paid probably on, on the same spectrum, if not more than what Deshaun Watson got with the Browns. And, uh, and I think that he can make that argument having this be a headline. It probably helps his cause. Probably so. You also have some other guys coming up, uh, Justin Herbert, uh, Tua, Tua, uh, Jalen Hurts, Hurts. That could benefit. Joe Burrow could benefit from this as well. Absolutely. He played a dozen seasons in the NFL, half of which with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, third in franchise rushing, and for the Falcons, fourth in franchise rushing. Won a natty with FSU back in '93. Legend off the field as well. We welcome to the program Warwick Dunn. And he's here in person. How about this? Yes. In person, no Zoom, no Zoom. <laughs> what an honor. I know. we got to push back against Zoom every once in a while, the comforts of life. Uh, i, I got to start here because um, what you do off the field, I mean, just the impact of it, you've affected so many families. Yeah. Um, and the stories are really, at this point, endless because you've been doing this for, for so long. But between uh, Work Done Charities and, and Home for the Holidays, helping single single moms to, to reach that milestone of home ownership for the first time, now over 200 families impacted. I, I've got to imagine from a personal standpoint that each time you're able to kind of award that check to see someone walk into their new home, that it hits you fresh each time. Well, it's, it is a priceless moment when you have an opportunity to experience, you know, just the joy and the excitement that the families have when they actually walk through that door for the first time. And to me, that is life changing. And we've been able to really bless, it's not just single moms, but single parent families. We've had four single fathers and we're up to 208 homes that we've done. It's and we're, getting, we're celebrating 25 years, actually. You know, so um, it's been just, it's been a blessing. I mean, I, this program for, for years has been like therapy for me. And now it's also growth and you learn and mature and you want to try to see how you can actually impact and change people's lives for better. And we've really been able to do that. And now we got holistic programming where we financial literacy, health and wellness is really just trying to educate people on, you know, finances, but also eating and being healthier long term. Well, that's to mean even more this time of year when you think about Thanksgiving and yeah. families sitting down for that meal in their new home. A single parent for the first time can look at something and say, 
this is mine, I've worked to achieve this, yeah. achieved it through also association with work done charities. Is, do you, does that come to mind to you this time of year when you're sitting down at your home and you're thinking about just what it means to have a home? Well, I, I, for me, uh, because I'm a homeowner, I'm thankful for that. But, it, but I take these stories, these families that we've been able to help, and I also take my mom and her journey of what she wanted for us. So for me, it's important that you show thanks for what, what you do have, but also can we extend a helping hand to help other individuals? And for me, you know, I'm just thankful that I've had the ability to actually go out and and change someone's life for the better. And you know, when you first started, when I first started this program, it was about the parents. Now it was more about the kids because mm. you know, as parents, we've lived our life and we're going to continue living. But we got to set the foundation, the stability for the kids long term because you really want to change their outcomes. And for me, I'm just thankful around this time of year because this is when it actually all started. That the whole dream, the goal of uh, really helping families become homeowners, uh, single parent families becoming homeowners. Why was this the, the avenue that you decided to choose? I mean, as a professional athlete, you have a platform, you could go any, any direction you want, but you decided early on in your career, this is, this is where you want to go. Well, I would tell you first, I, I'm connected to it personally because I understand that is, I understand the journey because that was my mom's journey. Yeah. That was what she wanted. She sacrificed her life for us and wasn't able to realize that. But I got on a journey because Coach Dungey at the time challenged the rookies about getting involved and giving back. And just really thinking about his challenge and you know, how can I go and, and actually assist someone and not saying, hey, I don't like giving out turkeys or those things. I just wanted to do something that had more impact that was something I can connect to. And, you know, first time home ownership, $5,000 down payment assistance and fully furnished a home. I can connect to that because I knew that was my mom's issue, the things that she wanted, but also she sacrificed her life to get us that. And, and you know, for me, I just have to continue to try to pay it forward. And in today's day and age, um, really, that's that's where change happens foundationally yeah. is when you have. A, a place to call your own, you know, where, where your whole trajectory that not just your life, your kid's life, but down the road is impacted because just of, of having a purchase like that. Well, if you think about it, you, you really want to help families start that generational wealth. I mean, that may it may take another generation for that to happen, but you have to start somewhere and get them on a path to understanding. Mm -hmm the opportunity, the need to set a, a, a great foundation, a foundation for themselves, but also educate them, right? You gotta do all these things just to get to the point where now we're making and helping families with generational wealth. Their house is gonna value, you yeah. know, the value is gonna increase over a course of time, but are the kids gonna be in position to really understand, you know, that, hey, I wanna follow my mom's or my dad's footsteps and become a homeowner, own my own home and, and do those things. Right. So you wanna to try to create those good habits instead of the bad habits that I think a lot of uh, um, low income families have where they don't know, so they don't do. And if we can educate families of knowing the right things to do, then hopefully the future's change. Changing a lot of lives through that. It, it yeah. goes on, it's a ripple effect, right? Uh, what's Thanksgiving like around the Dunn House? What are you guys doing when you're not helping other people get into their homes? Well, we do cook. My grandmother, uh, who's 85 years old, still around. So, you know, cornbread dressing. We Ooh. have the turkey, <laughs> ham, the yams, you know, sweet potato pies. You know, now we're we, talking. We, we, the macaroni and cheese. So we, we still do it right. Now, do I want to do it? You know, sometimes I'm forced to do. I got. It's we all got our right. part. You know, I don't have a choice. Sometimes you're like, no, you cooking this. Well, you that's a compliment. It's a yeah. compliment to the chef. They believe yeah. in your abilities to get the job done. Right? Well, you know, I'm I'm known as Chef Boy, your homeboy. So you know, I'm gonna do my part. I'm gonna do my well, part. Well, I was so glad to hear you call it dressing and not stuffing. Yeah. That's what lets me know you're a fellow Southerner. Okay, right? well, we have this debate yeah, I'm all still, the time. I'm, I'm, I'm a stuffing boots. guy. I'm yeah. from the boot, so we do things a little bit different. Right, so. right, yeah. I like it. You mentioned uh, Tony Dungeon. And uh, I know that, you know, his impact on athletes throughout his coaching, like his it's it's been unparalleled, really. And but I'm curious what that was like for you as a young player in the league to come in. And I mean, was was the things that he ingrained in you something that 
was new to you? H how has that stuck with you and how has that relationship kind of been fostered over the years? Well, I would tell you just when I first met Coach Dungey, you know, I said, hey, I want to come to Tampa. I want to, you know, I knew that they needed a running back. You know, but I also think he was sent or he was God sent for me. Hmm. And sometimes you really don't really understand, you know, why someone is in your life or the things that they say to you, do you really comprehend it? And I think for me, after Coach Bowden, you know, you, now you have another great individual, a God fearing man that really wants to lead you. And the way that he coached, he wasn't yelling and cursing and those things. He was really just talking to you about you know the everyday football about life and I really I think I just really took heed to that and I followed his footsteps in a sense so for me he he was just really just God sent someone that I'm thankful that was not just lead myself but a, a lot of young men and coaches I mean he has a great coaching tree in the National Football League so he's a great individual overall it's incredible you had as you mentioned two coaches like that like that were put there for you at those times in your life coach yeah. Bowden and then coach Dungey I mean it's it's, it's, well, it's incredible and, too and if you're, if you're gonna like you know stack like coaches on, <laughs> on all levels that yeah. have a reputation yeah, yeah. for that I mean Bowden and Dungey are probably one and two <laughs> well yeah. I could tell you both of them coach Bowden I would go to his office every other week or every couple of weeks and talk to him about my family what do I need to do he always gave me examples of what he did with his kids and when I came a buccaneer after my rookie year my youngest three brothers moved in and lived with me so coach Dungeon and his wife were there to really help me I mean what am I gonna ask go to the school and PTA meetings and all this stuff I didn't know what to ask so I was there and his wife she really assisted me but he helped guide me at that time so he, they were there for me in, in really tough times, and you know, years later I learned that I was depressed and that I, you know I was just still dealing with the trauma and really hadn't addressed it. So mm. I'm just happy that I had those individuals in my life that can really help and, and keep me together and keep me focused. But um, for all the good that Bowden uh, left with you, he also recruited you to play defensive back. At FSU. <laughs> well, everyone how, what, did. What was, everyone did. Everybody. How everybody. did you? How did you change the tune? What was the recruiting process like with, with Coach Bowden? Well, at first, when I, I went on a recruiting trip uh, a couple weeks after my mom had passed, and it, it was for they wanted me to be a defensive back, and I'm just like, this is not what I want to play. So I was coming down to decision day where I, had, I needed to to uh, decide, and I just said, Coach, I'll come. But if you give me a shot at running back, and if it doesn't work out, I'll move to defensive back. And I try to mimic his voice all the time. I'm terrible at it. <laughs> give it a like, shot. He was like, what? Okay, <laughs> if it doesn't work out, <laughs> you're going to go to defensive back. That's pretty good. Right. And I would say after, you know, a few days at running back, I never even thought of defensive back. You well, know, I still get yelled at by Mick Andrews, and you would have been a great <laughs> defensive back. So. You know, it's, I'm thankful though. Thankful that he gave me an opportunity. He he gave me a chance, and I know I had to do my part to prove to him that I can play. It wasn't one of those bait and switch situations, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah, we'll give you a shot at uh, running we'll take back. Care of it. A man of his word. Yeah. I mean, that to me that that meant a lot. That meant a lot. Uh, so when you left the Bucks, um, you know, I know that a lot of Bucks fans never wanted you to leave. Uh, how how close were you to resigning here in Tampa Bay? Well, honestly, I, I didn't want to leave, but it's, uh, at that time they were focused on defense, building the defense, and you know I gave the, the Buccaneers at the time first right of refusal. I said, hey, this is what I'm being offered in Atlanta. And it's like, well, no, we can't do that, so just good luck and move on. And, and you know, at first I was disappointed, and, and of course you, you get a little upset, but I had to understand too, this is a business. I can't take it personal. They have to do what's in their best interest, and I also have to do what's in my best interest. And yeah, you know, I decided that it was, I guess it was time to go. I, I didn't want to leave Tampa. I mean, I, I love palm trees and water. So, <laughs> you know, sometimes in life you have to make those decisions and, you know, move forward. And I, I tried to make the best decision for myself and my family. Well, in your four, in your five years here, you, you guys went to the playoffs four of those years. Right. And then you leave, they win the Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. Had you kind of felt that that's where the, the tide was, was leading? I mean, 
were you at all surprised that they went on to win the whole thing in, in 02? No, I wasn't. I mean, if you think about it, how close were we, were we when right. we played the Rams, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. today that's a catch. I mean, that, that right there would probably help us put us in the Super Bowl. So we were close and we were coming together on offense. I know it was a little spotty in the beginning because it was more focused defense, but we started to be a little balanced. And I think uh, when I left um, offensively, they just changed things up a little bit. And you know, they actually came together and made plays at the right time. So I just think Gruden did a good job of bringing them together, but it was still Coach Dungey's team. Right. right. It's still a lot of those same characters that really built it and became really defense first, offense second. Well, you played with so many great Bucks players in that time, and on that defense that he built is Rondé Barber, who, again, is a semifinalist now for the Hall of Fame, the Football Hall of Fame. Is this his year? Well, I, you know, I, I love Rondé, and I hope he gets his opportunity. I think he's well very deserving he came in he learned his first year he didn't play so he just watched and learned and he was someone that actually when he got his opportunity he, w he was impactful and he studied understood and he played to his strengths and so I think he has a great shot to go into the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Do you feel like I don't know how closely you follow it but the same voters the same board tends to choose the Hall of Fame yeah. every year and yeah. some people have Rondé Barber fans have made the assertion that that does not help you get in when the same people are deciding your fate every year. Why are they likely to put you in one year when they haven't put you in the previous four years? Yeah. And does that, you know, open up the argument for having some rotating, some new voters and not the same, you know, old voices on the board? <laughs> well, I, I mean, I deal with the same thing. So, you know, I, I would say... Rundé, myself, we're in that position where I have over 15,000 yards of total offense. I'm only 37 yards shy of 11,000 rushing. So if you think about it, someone who played at 5'9", 180 pounds, I wasn't 210, I mean 220, running the football, and plus the era that I played in, you had to, I had to prove that I can take the pounding. So I wasn't mm -hmm. getting the ball early on. I had to really prove, and Rundé, it's similar, but you have the individuals who are, are judging or making those decisions. Sometimes it's just sports reporters who may not have played the game and really understand uh, the ins and outs. And, you know, for me, I think over the years I've learned that it has come down to if you won a Super Bowl, right, you, just because you may have won a Super That's Bowl true. doesn't mean that you were a great, great, great player. You were on a great football team, right? right? So it's just... It's a lot Sounds of like you'd like to hear some fresh voices in the in the voting oh. room there too. Well, I think that it's it needs to change up a little bit. I mean, I, I respect all the reporters; they're going to re report. But you know, all of us have a case for why we should be in, and, and, and of course, you're going to have the naysayers say, "Well, it shouldn't be this or that." But you know, we we all are um, wanting to see the right guys go into the hall, and not just the guys because they won championships, Super Bowls. I mean, I don't think that should be the only reason right. that guys get in. Yeah, no, it help it, it helps the resume. It looks a little bit more, you know, splashy. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, in, when, when you look at like a, a Rondé's, you know, yep. what his position was, I mean, sometimes the trailblazer doesn't get the full credit, right? Yeah. You know, okay. I mean, he he played a position that at the time was was not one. So, yeah. Yeah. so he sets the table for the game now, and there's certain players that have benefited because of of the guys that yeah. went before him um when you're when you were lining up in the backfield was there ever was there a defender that you looked at across the field and said oh boy it's gonna be a long it's gonna be a long afternoon <laughs> never 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 really? that. never i would never give a defensive player that much credit anyway i mean i, <laughs> I mean that would be crazy you know, I, you know being small though i grew up i mean i was always the smallest guy so for me playing against guys that were bigger I, I mean, I was just like, you got to try to catch me. I mean, that was the thing. Are you going to catch me? And I wasn't letting guys get really big hits on me. So for me, it really wasn't about the guy on the other side. I had to believe in my guys up front yeah. to block and to protect me, give me the opportunity to go into the next level to make people miss. So I really didn't focus on if it was, you know, I played against Reggie White, Kevin yeah. Green. I had to block those guys. <laughs> Man, so I wasn't fearful that. Oh my God! It's, I ran, oh my God! This, this, I, I just wasn't 
I wasn't fearful. What's the key to a good chip lock on Reggie White? (laughs) Well, um, I would tell you that you need to fake like you're going to cut him, (laughs) then jump up in his chest. uh, Jump up in his chest. uh, That's what I was small. I was just like, I wasn't going to move him. Now I was just going to get in his way. Just got to get in his way. But the quarterback also know three step drop. You better get the ball out. I mean, it's only so much. <laughs> <laughs> only so much. <laughs> all much. Yeah, that's all I could do. God's given me some talents, <laughs> but you know, man up against Just Reggie White. Get in White. the way. No. Get in the way. That's exactly. all. I do. Get in the way. Are you following those Seminoles closely this season? I know you're busy, but you, if you well, are, you got to be kind of proud of where they've gone with well, this team. I, I am happy of their progression and where they're at. I mean, they started off. You know, it was exciting early on, then you, you take a fall, and now they've actually picked it up, and, and they're much more consistent. I think they're really understanding who they are as a football team. They're running the ball much more consistently, and I think, you know, Jordan Travis is really understanding his role as well. But we're yeah. playing better on defense. I mean, they're actually playing more, much more consistent yeah. football, but they're still learning. And for me, it's important that you continue to let the guys get opportunity to experience you know, what it's like to be successful, but also when you got to, when it's the game's on the line, you got to focus. And I think those guys are really starting to understand and they're executing in, in crutch moments. Yeah, setting themselves up for what should be a really special year next year with, with what they've built, the defense, as you well, said, is playing get, well. Let's not get, well, get to too next far year. Ahead. <laughs> too, too yeah, far we got <laughs> to stay within the moment. We have, we have those haters those haters there you go. <laughs> coming up on on friday so you know we got to take care of that first get to a bowl game because we hadn't really been yeah, in one yeah and now that process of recruiting what they're building that's what they should just go off of and try to get more players to come and support and you never know what happens next year we'll say futures looking bright yeah just yeah. like what you specialize in off the field helping futures look bright so for all you've done on the field and and many accomplishments uh the stuff that you've done off the field has, yeah. has made you legendary so we thank you for spending a little time here on the nod pod no no i appreciate it the great work done thanks thank you, sir. thank you thank you man appreciate it you know chris he also won uh, walter payton man of the year award and you know for all the for all the awards that players can get for you know racking up yards and all that kind of good stuff uh, that is one of the the true individual trophies that i know players really prize it, it it's it's to all the stuff they've done off the field he continues to do it you got to love what he said about tony dungy's influence on his life he's still living it that lesson that Tony taught him about yep. use your life to make someone else's better. He's still living it. Yeah, he, he's put together quite the legacy. All right, let's bring in Brian King, BK. What'd you think of the old Seminole right there? God, it's amazing how much you can hear the influence that Dungy and, and Coach Bowden had with him. I yep. mean, every t- every sound he would say and every sound bite he had was just just you know exuded those two coaches so it's a huge impact they had on his life yeah some some legends of the game he was uh, he was lucky to have those guys as coaches but it yeah. sounds like maybe it was more than just luck right yeah well, yeah all right good, so good what do we have uh, lined up here you, te- you gave us a great tease at well, the beginning of the show a little vague a little vague you remember a few weeks back we talked about the toy hall of fame oh, oh. I, how can i forget the finalists of the toy hall of fame and they were going to vote come out there top okay, three good. inductees right good good, good. so this is it we know this, well we know we know the okay. inductee class let's go back remember we had okay. racco racco we had <laughs> katan we had he-man pound puppies bingo top yeah all these games nerf ball light bright now yeah. can we go back in time to figure out which we predicted would get in because uh, i don't do you I, remember yours Chris? i think i think i i think i thought light bright would get in yeah, i was surprised yeah, it wasn't in already we, we both had light bright I think we thought Nerf should not be in because there's Nerf everything. Nerf everything. Yeah. They can't, yeah, Nerf gun, Nerf ball, Nerf footballs, whatever. I think we didn't know what Racco was. It sounds painful. Yeah. <laughs> and the horse. What about that that plastic horse? <laughs> it's not My Little Pony. What is that? Some imposter. Yeah. Oh, no, that's the br- the Briar horse. The Briar oh. horse is correct. Yeah, of course. I don't All right, so who who's in? Number three. Okay. Boom. Light bright. Boom. Okay. There we go. All right. Good. Finally. We're on the money. Yeah. No more snubs for Light Bright. I mean, this this is uh, this is the 80s, right? I mean, this is if you're a, a child of the 80s, Light Bright was the, this was the best technology we had between this and Speak and Spell. <laughs> I mean, those were like the two things. We're like, wow. Look how uncreative the kid on the cover of the Light Bright was, though. <laughs> he, did you see that? He literally, his design was a Mr. Potato Head. It was 
another toy that was sitting in front of him. <laughs> Wouldn't it be cool to play with this light bright instead of the potato head? We'll yeah. Pick, make a picture. Yeah. All right. So that makes sense. That's, that's the first one. Number two, He-Man. Yes. He-Man's in. Okay. This is my See, personal. Yeah. No, this is my personal favorite of this class of nominees. He-Man is... He, he's the master of the universe, you know, by the power of Grayskull. Uh, he had the Cringer that uh, would turn into Battle Cat, and then that Skeletor was always cackling and trying Looks to... Looks like this He-Man has, like, hip dysplasia or something. <laughs> there's, a, there's something of an issue. He also <laughs> is a redhead, and I remember distinctly my He-Man being blonde. Yeah, so. no, he's blonde. That is blonde. It matches his sword. Can't you tell? Uh, my right. color's off. It get, must have been the you check for too much blindness. pecan pie. Yeah, there you <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he, He-Man's in. That wouldn't have been my vote. Uh, it wouldn't have been but, mine either. Yeah, uh, it's okay. And then the last one, and I think we all kind of talked urn. about this. Is that an urn? It's an urn. No, it's a top. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only top picture I could find that we were <laughs> what able to run. What kind of top is that? That's not a top. It's a, it's a, I think it's that top that you crank and it spins on its okay, own or something. It's the only one I could find. Okay, very but good. But hey, it's a top. It's in it's the Hall the of Fame. It's the only picture you could find and it's in the Hall of Fame. The There's top. something wrong. Again, uh, we've talked <laughs> about the voters of the Hall of Fame. The top, first of all, should have been in the Hall of Fame a long time ago, like when there were only three toys. Yeah, and it prior was to Lightbright. Top <laughs> and bucket of sand and stick. Mud. Yeah. Yeah. All right, glad Top's okay. finally in. Top's going to get its little yellow jacket finally. So that's the, the, gold yeah, jacket. The, that's the three inductees for the class of 2022. Wow. Class of 2023 voting starts January 9th. Okay. So, we got, so get your list together. Oh. And we, and we don't have, I mean... How do you determine like who to vote for? You just I don't basically know. I go think you just nominate them. Okay. So what anybody toys, can nominate. Okay. So what toys from the Smith childhood would you like to nominate? I mean, B BB gun in there. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if BB gun. Slingshot. Too. Slingshot. A lot of weapons. <laughs> yeah. That's what we, you know, harassing squirrels. Um, yeah. Uh, again, Lincoln Logs was like my number. One, that and GI Joe guys. Which is already and sometimes in the uh, together. Yeah. Oh yeah. The GI Joe soldiers would often yeah, in invade. The forts. Yeah. Yes. But those should already they're be already, in the Hall yeah, of Fame. Yeah, they're already in. So and I'm trying to think of any good ones I had. Um, you know, probably uh, lots of Nerf stuff. Yeah. Um, Do you remember that football player that kicked Phil goes that you'd slam his head, Mr. Toe or something? No, like that? I didn't have Mr. Toe. Come on, guys. Hung is hungry, hungry hippos in? Uh, should be in. I'm not sure. I don't, that was I don't a have good one. Really what about uh, you? We all had this. Uh, it was the electronic football, and the guys would just vibrate around on the. On the you know yeah. playing surface no, and I never really go anywhere. I, I mean, I know what you're talking about, but I didn't I didn't have that. Oh uh, well, that you, should, like you should ask Santa. He at that point, we had video games, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> not, not in Alabama, but that should be nominated, right? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. electronic football. What I mean, about Rock'em Sock'em Robots? That's got to oh, be gotta, it. It's got to be it, right? Come on. All right, Brian doesn't he have doesn't the know. for us. He, I thought well, he had no, a, just there's a generation there. gap because, yeah. I mean, Evil Knievel's got to be in there. I mean, that was my favorite toy of all time. That was a toy? Uh, what the about Evil Knievel motorcycle? Oh, God, yes. What about Stretch Armstrong? Stretch Armstrong was fun. Is he in? Uh, I, have to, I don't have the list. You know, I, I, uh, I ate the goo inside oh, Stretch Armstrong. Just like the pecan pie. It, it was. It was very close. similar. I think that's what's in pecan pie. It's, <laughs> it's Stretch Armstrong goo. And look, all these years later, I'm still... I do not do it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. You're very stretchy, though. Here, give me your arm. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, we've brought it full circle from Stretch Armstrong to pumpkin uh, pecan pie filling. Mm. Very good. All right. Thank you, BK. Um, and if you would like to watch full length episodes of this here podcast, Go to fox13news.com slash nodpod. Hit that QR code that is currently on the screen. Uh, please subscribe, and you can do that on any place that podcasts are available. That includes iTunes and Google Play. And, of course, you can catch the show on all of our socials. That would be Facebook, Instagram, and, and Twitter, and, and the like. So, very good. Big thanks to our guests today, Warwick Dunn. Great big man. thanks to Chris Cato for bringing in pie, always clutch. I'm glad that our friendship has reached this point. This Tumultuous is, it's it been. It can only go down from here. We're in a good place now. I hope your rival, whoever your big rivalry football team is out there, I hope you're able to uh, conquer them and not have to live with a bad taste in your mouth, much like I have from that pecan pie. Very good. And much thanks to BK and our production crew here in Nod Pod Studios. Until the next time we are on, there are no off days.